Hi friends, uh, this is Uju uh, from Culture of Life Africa. If you want to know a bit more about me, just go to cultureoflifeafrica.com. The reason I'm actually recording this video today, this Sunday, uh, was about a little controversy that came up uh, following an invitation I got from BBC uh, Morning Show, which is a sun Sunday morning live show, uh, which is every Sunday, I think, in the UK at 10 in the morning. So I have been on that show before. If some of you who follow my work recall, uh, about three months or two months ago, I was on that same very show speaking about Melinda Gates' um, comments about the Catholic Church and contraception. But in any case, they graciously invited me back again today, to be on today, uh, and what was going on, what was up for discussion? It was the fact that uh, in the United Kingdom, there was a, a, a small borough, so like, a, like a, a particular region, a local government, that had banned uh, praying in front of the abortion clinics. And especially, you know, these, if anyone in the pro-life movement would know this is the time for 40 days for life. So uh, they quickly uh, set up this panel or whatever. And I think sometime early last week, they voted almost unanimously or unanimously to ban uh, pro-life, what they call, were calling anti-abortion protests in front of the abortion clinic. So of course, this would include all the 40 days for life people. This would include, uh, you know, sidewalk counselors and people who offer help to women who were coming for abortions and and many times i will tell you because i have friends who who actually engage in this sort of ministry which is really powerful i myself have prayed in front of an abortion clinic here somewhere in cardiff and that also was powerful we're there we're offering help to women people are begging women some of these people are so dedicated they'll be there on the rain on the shine no matter what happens that they're waiting for the women trying to help them trying to offer them help trying to offer them leaflet trying to offer them some hope. So this uh, local government banned, uh, voted to ban um, this uh, sort of intervention, pro-life intervention, because of course there is a very strong uh, abortion lobby here in the United Kingdom. There are certain organizations who went out to say that this was antisocial behavior. They were comparing it to people who were, you know, like people who get drunk and, and they are standing on the street. So they, 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 were, they called it the protective space. I think it was protective space policy. So that pro-life people will be taken as nuisance and they'll be swept out uh, you know and this has happened now successfully in this borough and of course the mp the labor mp uh, this lady i wouldn't name her but you can find out on the internet under her direction this has happened she's very very strong uh, abortion supporter uh, she as i said she's an mp um and then now she's even calling for her ban, what she has actually managed to, to achieve in her area for it to be made nationwide. So imagine what this would mean for free speech in this country. Imagine what this would mean uh, for the the women who are coming there with no hope and who are coming there thinking that there was no other choice than abortion. So this was, of course, a really horrible and disappointing thing. And and so that was why a panel was going to be set up by BBC uh, Sunday morning live show. And I was supposed to be one of the panelists. Normally they have four people on the panel. There's two people for and two people again. So of course I was coming in to speak for the pro-life perspective with somebody else who was a specialist in free speech. But normally they also have somebody, what they call someone down the link or something like that. So that means that during the show, there is an opportunity of about two and a half minutes where they go off and they, they interview someone else. And I have watched this show many times um, and a lot of my friends have been on the show as well. And I have been on the show myself uh, that the person who is down the line could then be either pro or against. Right. So um, many times, you know, a friend of mine uh, who said she had been on speaking about IVF. They had someone, of course, who had had IVFs and who wanted for government to continue sponsoring IVFs. So it is not unusual that they bring someone, you know, from the other side. But this time around, uh, when they told me to come on the show, one of the first questions I asked, and this is, oh, I have all the records, I have all the emails. I wrote an email to them and I said, 
I actually do want to know the people who are with me, people who are on my side. I want to know who are you bringing on, who else is coming on the show with me, especially speaking from the pro-life perspective. Uh, so they they gave me, they told me after a day they would find out. So by the 12th of October, earlier in the week, they wrote me an email. They said to me, there is myself. There was another man who was speaking, you know, from the free speech perspective why this is bad for free speech in the country then they were also bringing in uh for the first time ever a woman who had been going to an abortion clinic to have an abortion and then met with pro-life people going into this abortion while going into this abortion clinic now the pro-life people offered help and this woman took the help so because of this in pro-life into peaceful pro-life witnessing and intervention this woman not only did she get help but today she has a two-year-old child uh, who is a living testimony of the fact that indeed uh, pro-life advocacy works peaceful pro-life witnessing is important praying in front of abortion clinics is important so this woman's life is uh, you know and her child's life is in fact a living testimony to what pro-life you know what what the entire pro-life ministry is all about so they told me they were bringing on this woman and i was really excited i was so happy uh, and i wrote them back and i you know i said that's great and so go ahead and book everything everything was booked they booked my transport they booked the hotel everything was put in place now yesterday as i was preparing to go to london because i live 160 miles away from london as i was getting ready to go to london uh as against today to go to be at the bbc show this morning i got a message from uh the director of good council network which is of course one of the amazing amazing sidewalk counseling organizations in the uk they are there praying all the time all through the year during 40 days for life and even beyond they are praying there they're offering help to women they i mean these these people are amazing so the director sent me a message and said to me that the mother who of course who had the life affirming message that her child lived because of pro-life witnessing uh, that BBC decided to cancel her to actually they just they were going to drop her and I asked her why <laughs> and she said it was most likely because um, uh, th because of the fact that the, the pro-choice or the, the abortion advocates who were going to be on the show with us had heard that she was coming on and of course because she is a I mean, her existence and the existence of her child is actually a complete negation and debunking of the entire pro-choice argument. They would have refused to be on the show. So that made me very unhappy. So I got in touch with uh, with the the person booking me at BBC. I wrote her an email and I said to her, I'm really grateful for the invitation. Um, and I, you know, I'm so happy about the invitation. But if you recall, before I even accepted this invitation completely, I asked you, who is coming on the show? And this is what you told me on the 12th. I, I actually gave her the date that she told me that the person was coming on and now i hear that she's no longer coming on and um and i also suspect it's because of the your your out of respect that bbc has for the pro-choice movement and the pro-choice advocates uh, that's the reason why someone that you booked you had already confirmed that she was coming on the show now because she has a life affirming message and because she's a living witness um you are cancelling her so if she's not coming on uh, then i would also not be coming on the show because i also went ahead to say in this email i told the bbc people that because i think that uh this woman's voice is so much more important than mine it doesn't matter what i have to say it doesn't matter that i have been in media and i have done pro-life work for a number of years but the fact that this woman exists the fact that her baby exists that is why pro-life people do what they do the reason i do what i do is that for people to know 
and see and hear uh, the, the testimonies of women, these women who have been completely relegated to the shadows, the women who, there are two groups of women in the, like this, there are the women who had abortions and who are now suffering intense psychological pain and trauma for it, even years after, those women, nobody is listening to them, nobody wants to hear them, the, the mainstream media would never ever show them, uh, and then there are the women who were abortion minded and eventually uh, they went on to choose life because they met a pro-life person or because a pro-life organization intervened. So that's the reason why we do the work and I told them that if this woman does not come on the show then it's completely useless for me to come on and I will not be coming on. So I gave them a couple of hours because of course I live so far from London that for me to be on the show this morning I had to have been in London yesterday at some point yesterday. So after some hours, they got back to me. In fact, they phoned me, uh, which was very gracious of them. We had the conversation and they told me that they were so sorry. They, they really still tried to convince me to come on. They were saying they couldn't bring her on. And I said, why? They told me it was because the time was too short. I said, that's not so because you had already booked this woman as at 12th of October when I got the email. It was very clearly stated that this woman was coming on the show and you knew everything about the time constraints and the fact that you have how many people on the on the show and, and the fact that you were going to be able to bring in someone for a couple of minutes to speak about their own experience outside of the studio so uh, she she said to me well there is also the problem of people on the other side not seeing them as balanced so in other words it, our fear that the pro-choice movement put some pressure on them and at that point I told her yes this is the exact reason for which you have cancelled this woman with a life affirming message uh, this woman who had a child whose life had been saved if indeed there are children who were who would have been killed through abortion whose lives could have gone uh, by the the hands and equipment of an abortionist and at the end of the day this child's life or these children's lives are saved because of one pro-life person praying because of one pro-life person saying to a woman please don't do this please know that you have help please know that we will walk with you no matter what that if this is indeed true should BBC not be the ones showing this case showing these cases shouldn't these children even be part of a documentary I mean we see mainstream media going out to make a pro, a pro choice documentary going out to make some kind of women's reproductive rights uh, you know documentary and they're talking about downs down syndrome and how they are clearing one one whole country one how one whole entire country is eradicating down syndrome because of their access to abortion so should they not be able to go and chase up these cases where children real human life is saved from abortion because of a pro-life person praying or because of a pro-life person offering help in any case i told them that i was not going to come on the show i you know in that in that telephone conversation i still put my foot down and i said i really am i'm very sorry uh but because this is something that you are doing uh just in obedience uh and just in kowtowing to the pro-choice movement i will not be able to come on the show and of course the I knew in my mind and I had also been assured that yes they have to have two pro-life people sitting in the studio because there are two pro-choice people there so that then put them in a difficult situation so she told me that it's okay they were going to uh, completely remove my name and everything they were going to everything they had booked for me they were going to reverse it and I said that's fine so uh, I dropped the phone and all day, uh, I was uh, in contact with a lot of, you know, with a pro, the pro-life director from Good, Good, Good Council Network. And she, in turn, was in contact with a lot of other pro-life people. And people knew what was going on. So BBC tried to contact many other pro-life people to replace me. And, you know, they were calling up people, calling up people. And nobody would, nobody would go. So eventually, at the end of the day, you know, hours and hours later, sometime during the night, I think, then they agreed that the woman who had a life of every message would come on. And this time she would come in the studio and then she would take my, my place. So for me, uh, there's a couple of things here. One, I must say that I am really grateful, very, very grateful to BBC Morning Live Show for doing the right thing at the end of the day. It is true that they 
were in at first they were ready they were ready to completely suppress this woman's voice and completely reject her voice if you like because the pro-abortion movement was telling them that too to do so which is exactly how they have dominated every discussion this is how they they manage to continue to do what they do which is just con just the continuation of this ab abortion advocacy that abortion right is a good thing is because they are trying so hard to hide the children all the children who were saved by, ab by from ab from abortion by pro-life people and pro-life advocacy and pro-life witnessing they are trying all the time to hide uh, those those women and completely suppress their voices those women who have had abortions and who completely regret it and who know that just at the table at the abortion table of the abortionists uh, there is no redemption and there is no hope and there is no life I mean it's only death coming from these abortion clinics so those voices are completely suppressed uh, not only in the United Kingdom but across the Western world so this is the one thing that I, I, I felt upset about before and that was why I also did tell the BBC people before they they, 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 they completely reversed uh, when we had the conversation I said to them you know it's I don't mind not coming on but this woman has to come on if she does not come on uh, I will tell the world just how horrible it is that BBC will actually buy into this abortion culture so much so that even when a woman offers you know her sto her real life story to say i was there and now i have a two-year-old child because somebody told me just as i was entering the abortion clinic there is hope um so i told them i will go online i'm going to say things about your sh your show i'm going to to tell the world what happened i'm going to tell people that you obeyed the pro-choice movement in other words they ha they have become a pravda of the pro-choice movement which we see in a lot of cases, you know, across different networks. So I thank you BBC for eventually doing the right thing. And we hope you do more of it, that we have many more women who have children because uh, because people told them that they were going to give them help instead of, you know, them going to an abortion clinic. We have people also who have stories, really important stories to tell about how they went for abortions and their lives were changed for the worst. So we have those people come come to us and we you know there's organizations who will connect you to these people and these people should be the ones that their voices should be heard uh, we pro-life advocates yes we do have important things to say yes we can make the arguments but then beyond our argument there is something so much more powerful in bringing a person whose life whose entire existence or life uh, completely ep epitomizes what you're trying to do or say as a pro-life person so for me this is a marvelous victory I thank you so much uh, Claire Claire McCullough who is the director for the Good Council Network and she was the one who got this you know who who had helped this woman in the first place with her organization uh, then she's also the one who connected her to the BBC she was also the one who struggled and fought for her when she saw that the woman was being completely dropped out of the BBC uh, show so thank you so much all the pro-life people who put their foot down and will not come on the show until the, the voice of life was brought on the show um, it doesn't matter whether people are upset because we have brought someone who has a life affirming story but the truth is that perhaps a child will be saved perhaps some ordinary girl who is out there who, who is thinking about abortion would have seen this girl today and would have would think Yes, even I can choose life for my child. There is always hope. Uh, and that's the point of our pro-life work and that's the point of our pro-life advocacy. I wanted this to be a short video, but now it's a really, really long video. I do apologize, but I love you all. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you so much for your reactions yesterday on Twitter. Uh, and um, we will keep watching this fight and we will keep fighting this fight until abortion indeed becomes unthinkable. Thank you.